Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of Beauty Beacons of Fiction and today we are going to talk about Vanessa Ives. Vanessa Ives is the leading character in the horror drama series Penny Dreadful. The show aired between 2014 and 2016. Robert and I watched it back then and I absolutely loved it. It is very weird, I'd say. Um, hard to categorize, hard to describe. I absolutely love the concept. Vanessa sets out to help the father of her childhood friend um, find her, the childhood friend, as she has been missing for a while. And during that quest, she encounters all kinds of supernatural creatures, as well as literary figures. And strange as that sounds, it works so well, and I absolutely love how they did it. And I think this may just be one of the best scripted shows that I've ever watched. It was really entertaining, let's put it that way. So yes, Vanessa Eyes. She's the leading character, she's portrayed by Eva Green. I absolutely love this character. I love the design, I love the costumes, the hair, the makeup. It is done so well. The whole show is just incredibly aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> it has those amazing gothic vibes and it's just really, really nice to look at if you're into that kind of thing. The story is set in Victorian England and the costumes are inspired by that era as well. Um, Vanessa mainly wears a lot of black, black lace, some white as well, but mostly just black, but absolutely gorgeous costumes. I would very much like to steal a thing or two from her wardrobe. As for the hair and makeup, makeup is very minimal, as is to be expected from the Victorian era or something that is supposed to be set in the Victorian era. Her hair is amazing though. She usually wears her hair up um, in beautiful Victorian updos of varying elaboracy. The style that I chose today is inspired by some scenes where she kind of wears it up. I mostly tried to base this off of the hairstyle that she wears in the scene where she meets Dorian Gray in the botanical gardens, but I didn't have enough hair for it, even with a full set of extensions. So it turned into something of an improvisation uh, on the theme of Vanessa Ives' hair. <laughs> But we'll get to the hair later, let's actually start with the makeup. So like I mentioned, the makeup is super simple, minimal, we're going for a bit of a no makeup makeup look here, so it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to keep it light. So I'm going to start with a face primer here that I'm going to apply all over my skin, and after that is applied I'm going to go over with a foundation to even out my skin tone nicely. When that is blended in, I'm going to take some concealer that I'm going to apply on my under eye circles. Make sure those are nice and brightened up. Then a little bit of translucent powder is going to finish off my face makeup. So I'm going to just dust this all over my face, make sure it's nice and mattified and set in place. And then let's move on to the eyebrows. Eva Green has very distinctive, I'd say features in her eye region. Like her eyes and eyebrows are so iconic of her and pretty hard to recreate. But I tried to kind of straighten out my eyebrows in the front and then make them droop down a little bit quicker than mine naturally do. So I'm just using an eyebrow pencil for that. And then I'm going to take a eyebrow gel that I'm going to use to set everything in place. So for the eye makeup itself, I want to keep it very light. I'm not really going to apply anything on the eyelids for now. Looking at close-up pictures of her, you can definitely see she is wearing some type of dark eyeshadow around the eyes to kind of frame them a little bit. So I'm going to make a mixture of some grey and brown eyeshadow that I'm going to apply all around the eyes. And on the outside of my eyes, in the outer corner, I am going to extend the eyeliner down a little bit. And this is again to kind of try and mimic her kind of downward eye shape almost and make the eyes just look a little bit more droopy. So I'm going to apply that top and bottom. And then I just decided to go in with a skin color that's a little bit darker than my own skin color. After all, just to make my double eyelids a little bit less prominent and make it look like there isn't as much there. But we want this to be soft and not turn into almost like a smoky eye, so go easy on that. Then I applied a tiny little layer of mascara, just very thinly. Uh, if you notice any clumps or if your application is too heavy, do go over with a clean spoolie and just remove any excess because we wanted this to be super, super natural. Then for the face, I decided to do some soft contouring after all, so I'm going to take a contour powder and just try and emphasize my cheekbones a little bit more. And I'm going to go down in this kind of almost half circle motion. And then I'm going to take a nice pink blush that I'm going to apply on the apples of my cheeks, swipe backwards as well. 
over my cheekbones. Last step for the makeup is the lips and for those I'm going to take a berry colored lipstick. A little bit of a darker one, this one has a slightly purplish undertone which works great for this look. And I'm going to just apply that with my finger, gently dab it onto my lips so that it doesn't look too lipsticky, but more like a kind of berry colored flush over the lips. And there's the makeup all done. So moving on to the hair, and as I mentioned I am wearing a full set of hair extensions. These are tailbone length on me, so be warned, you need very long hair to execute this hairstyle properly, or you could use hair extensions, I will give you an alternative way to do this hairstyle later. But first thing I need to do is to curl the front top of my hair, because the hair is going to be pulled back, as you can see, and we want this portion to be curly. Now I am currently trying to save my hair from heat damage, so I don't want to curl all of my hair, actually I want to curl as little as I possibly can, so I am just going to curl this one portion that's going to be visible. If you want to be more thorough with this, by all means, curl all of your hair. It is a little bit more time consuming and not necessarily necessary, I think. But um, yeah, it's up to you. So I'm going to take the smallest barrel curling iron that I own and just curl all of the front top of my hair. When that is done, I'm going to quickly run my fingers through my hair to just separate these curls a little bit. And then I'm going to pull all of my hair back into a high ponytail. When I have that, I'm going to give my hair a twist and wrap it into a quick little bun. Now, since my hair isn't really long enough to do this, I can only do like one turn of the bun before I already have to pin it down. So I'm going to insert some bobby pins, make sure this stays up. If your hair is a little bit longer, you could twist this around just one entire time. That'll look a little bit better, a little bit more authentic. So then I'm going to take the, the tail that is still remaining I'm going to split that into two halves and do a rope braid with this. So I'm going to twist both of these sections in the same direction and then twist them around each other in the opposite direction. That is going to create my rope braid. So when my rope braid is done, I'm going to fluff it out a little bit because it's a little bit thinner than it is on Vanessa still before I wrap it around the back top of my head. Now, this is where I notice that my hair is still too short because I wanted to wrap it around and then over, but I need to kind of fold back on itself and then go back already, which is fine. I mean, it looks all right. If you want to avoid this and you have the means to do so, then you could take a second set of hair extensions, make the rope braid out of that, twist all of the hair that you have on your head into the bun, and then use the rope braid to lay it around, kind of like I did in my last Edwardian hair video. And then you can tuck the ends of the hair extensions under this flower pin, because Vanessa in this scene is wearing this gigantic flower hair accessory in the back of her head, which completely covers all of the back of her head. I didn't have anything that resembled what she's wearing, and the best I could do was this beautiful burgundy dark red flower, so I'm just going to push that into my hair by sliding two bobby pins into it and then weaving it into my hair right underneath where my bun is. So since I have a lot of layers and bangs and face framing bits things going on in the front of my hair, I have some flyaways on top. Vanessa's hair is much smoother than this, so I did decide to just grab a few of those loose pieces, kind of push them down and pin them down with some bobby pins, which is going to give me a little bit more of a flatter and smoother look. But yes, that is the hairstyle finished and there is the complete Vanessa Ives look done as well. I really, really like this look. I think it's a very beautiful, typical Victorian look. Perfect for when you're into that kind of thing or are looking for a Vanessa Ives cosplay hair tutorial. So yeah, that brings us to the end of this episode, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for loads more beauty and lifestyle content. If you have any suggestions for beauty beacons of history or of fiction that you would like me to recreate the looks of, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will look through pick someone out for next time. If you'd like to support me through Patreon or my merch store, there'll be links in the description box below. Thank you so much for your support. There is another video here that I think you might also enjoy. You can go watch next. Thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye!